so the images that you're talking about it, it's kind of created news but for us it's not a news for us it was one of those things that we are waiting to see on the social media what do you saw in pilibit uh, is the situation that might happen uh, more often but not as a some kind of danger is something that a human need to expect that tiger population increasing they will be dispersing hello and welcome to indian express uh today we are uh, going to be having a very interesting conversation uh india's majestic beast the tiger has been spotted at the baksar tiger reserve and uh, we will be talking uh to a scientist at wildlife institute of india who has been at the forefront of tiger conservation uh with me today is dr ramesh krishnamurthy uh thank you dr ramesh for coming on the channel uh for this very interesting conversation so he was involved in the project tiger augmentation and monitoring which was initiated back in 2018 and he has also worked extensively uh in baksa so so um my first question to you is you've got two images and uh, we just wanted to understand you know how do the tigers look like now because the last time i think uh the numbers of uh, the number of tigers had dwindled and in fact there were no tigers left at all but it was after 23 years uh back in 2021 that we had a sighting and then now in 2023 we had uh, uh spotted the tigers again so could you describe to our viewers how the tigers look like thank you thank you uh, mr charu for having me on this conversation uh before i answer uh, let me actually want to uh, congratulate everybody who is working on tiger conservation yes because you know that india has uh, been celebrating in this 50 years of uh, project tiger so uh, which basically uh, need to be seen from that context because india as a nation i think has been a forefront of tiger conservation that is a way that is why we see all this uh, uh, information because the tiger is a large ranging species a uh, conservation in a some area will also benefit other area okay right. so from the context of baksa baksa you know this is one of the earlier tiger reserves in the country which means that baksa had lot of tigers um, but in between only we lost tigers due to various reasons mm -hmm. and i would say that you know during that period only we started seeing tigers in bhutan otherwise okay. high altitudes never had tigers now we have tigers there so having seen this landscape because baksa as, as a area it's an excellent because it's a, it's a kind of habitat uh, adjoining the himalayas it's a mosaic of woodland and you know grasses mm -hmm. and not so much grassland like that right mm -hmm. uh, but habitat is great uh, because the disturbance was there in the past maybe it's kind of uh, made the tigers to disperse elsewhere Mm -hmm. so with the effort of uh, the forest bengal forest department the national tiger conservation authority and wildlife institute and also the global tiger forum so this project to um, bring back tiger in baksa is is been on the go for last 4 5 years uh, so that images that you're talking about it, it's kind of created news but for us it's not a news for us it was one of those things that we are waiting to see um, right. because uh, you have tigers in bhutan you have tigers in manas baksa is located in an area where it's contiguous so mm -hmm. it's coming so of course last time when we had the tiger image uh, the tigers came and then explored and went to jaldapara went to uh, mahananda it's moving around even we keep hearing the news sporadically from nora valley and also in sikkim uh, but to having a tiger in baksa is going to be a really really great uh, conservation uh, value because in the northern region that will then make it like one large contiguous landscape for tiger conservation to be there so these two images is kind of indication that the baksa is preparing itself to receive more tigers so uh, the preparation that you are talking about i'm sure a whole lot of team is involved behind this and uh, congratulations once again uh, i wanted to understand you know to safeguard tigers and the habitat right you must have faced uh, challenges right on your way so can you talk about your challenges and also the key reasons behind the comeback of the tigers so of course um, as you rightly said uh, conservation is a teamwork okay and the team also directly or indirectly involves communities which we very often forget 
So mm-hmm. they all kind of uh, interact with the forest. They've been using this forest for various reasons. Mm-hmm. But in this case, in terms of challenge, I would say tiger is uh, very sensitive. And you mentioned in your introduction, it's a beast. I think it's a very gentle creator, tend to avoid problems. Okay. It, it's yeah. tiger is a species. Yeah. I mean, we, we feel it like uh, many, many people who don't see the tiger, it looks like a very ferocious animal, dangerous animal. Of course, we see a problem animal, uh, no tiger is killing people, all that we see. When you look at the majority of the situation, uh, but it's a gentle create, gentle animal tend to avoid disturbance. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that is the start of the challenge that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. When a forest is used by people for various reasons, if mm-hmm. tiger does not find its uh, inviolate space, mm-hmm. then you would find them to be kind of not coming there. So that was one of the things to kind of uh, uh, reduce the human pressure in the park. Because it's uh, easier said than done is reducing human pressure because uh, many of the time, the human usage of the forest is also for a genuine in the sense that people have been using it for traditionally and also recently for various reasons. So uh, I think the do- government is simultaneously working on to kind of eliminate that. That was a uh, one big challenge. I think that is a challenge that will still continue to exist. So we need to work more on working with people and reduce the disturbance. The second was on the prey. So prey is a key, de- key determinant for tiger conservation. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can simply kind of... Um, eliminate tiger by just eliminating prey species that's what we know so people have even though people are probably not directly you know cause damage to tiger if they have done it to the prey so that will also be a problem so bringing a prey population is also another big challenge as a technical team because you know removing uh, human disturbances it's more of an administrative and economic solution but bringing a prey population is administrative, financial, and ecological challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's another thing. Okay. The third, the third is to now look at an option. Where do we get the tiger? Do we wait for the tiger to come on its own, or how long would we wait, right. or to bring it elsewhere? So because we have been working on active tiger recovery uh, in India, mm-hmm. because you know Sariska, you know Panna, we mm-hmm. have many other sites. So. I think that is also part of our strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think uh, the West Bengal Forest Department, uh, the currently the, the leadership in the headquarters and the ground, um, I think they're all working together to make sure mm-hmm. that Baksa has its tiger, what it is due for. Mm-hmm. So what goes behind building the tiger's population exactly? Can you also take us uh, through this whole process? So particularly for these situations, like uh, where tiger existed in the past and gone extinct or gone into very few a number, I think one of the things that really happens is to really nail the problem as to what made this population to go existing. Mm-hmm. And that understanding is very important, which is not very often seen outside. Uh, that requires uh, so much of detailed studies and analysis to see uh, what could be the possible reason, because you may not be able to pinpoint exactly these, 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 but there could be a list of uh, reasons that would have caused this. So that was uh, initial assessment, looking at historical analysis and looking at um, the situation. That's number one. Number two, it's looking at the site suitability. Okay. What is the status of the habitat now in terms of the habitat quality, uh, protection status, and prey population? And uh, what are the possible conflict situation in case if a tiger population breeds up and things like because in places like Baksa where people are also around it. So we also don't want a situation that the conservation itself becomes a problem for people and also the species. Mm-hmm. So this preparation goes around. In fact, for the last four or five years, I mean, uh, in, in fact, 2016 onwards, we started working on this. So okay. it's, it's six years. And um, uh, the f- frontline staff, uh, you know, they've been now more active you know, the earlier, uh, there was a uh, challenges in terms of where you can, you know, deploy people. Now, those kind of systematic arrangement has been done by the forest department. So mm-hmm. the people are in the ground, patrolling is happening. Uh, because it's, see, Baksas also, other, uh, uh, the challenge is that is wild elephants are also there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Place okay. wild elephants. and So people have a lot of issues. So that preparation has been happening. And um, other one is regular monitoring. I mm-hmm. think the monitoring now, All India Tiger Estimation, we all know that. And there's uh, something known as a phase four monitoring where the, each tiger is supposed to monitor what is going on. But in addition, 
So we've been able to look at this aspect more comprehensively, not only in Baksa, the entire North Bengal, to understand what is the status. So these um, elements about the habitat quality, uh, protection status, prey augmentation, and the community interface, understanding them. So these were the things that went into. Of course, fund is an option. I know it's an important uh, thing to consider. Um, regular uh, support system is uh, necessary for tiger conservation. But tiger is like an investment. Okay, if you invest on tiger, tiger is going to pay back a lot more ecologically and financially. That's been the case uh, mm -hmm. even in Madhya Pradesh. You see, uh, mm -hmm. I've been involved in Panna Tiger Reserve for the last 10 years. Okay. When there was zero tiger and now with uh, 80 plus tiger, not only the tiger population increased, you see this whole lot of uh, the secondary, the financial instruments and the support system has also increased. And the people appreciation for conservation has increased. I think... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to manage it uh, in a very balanced manner. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we recently came across this video where uh, in Pilip Heat, uh, Tiger was uh, spotted, you know, resting you know, for about five to six hours. Uh, so, like you said, you know, it's not a beast, it's a gentle creature, you know. So, uh, I really wanted to understand the role of local community, you know, in the whole conservation uh, process. So how do you think, you know, people have uh, contributed and uh, what role can they play? So I think yeah, uh, you said it um, because that particular video was very, very interesting and very important for the tiger conservation in the current situation mm -hmm. because tiger population is increasing. And when tiger population increases, they will have to spill over. It's very natural phenomena. So particularly this was a female, it's a young female, which, which is on the dispersing stage. So what happens is uh, when the tiger is established territory, the female, I mean, after two years, so she pushes out her children so to make them to fend for themselves and they start exploring new areas, you know, established territory. Pilipit is again, I mean, it's last uh, 10 years, I would say the population has increased again a lot. Uh, places like Pilipit has also got a very sharp boundaries between the forest and the people. Mm -hmm. So even stepping out of the forest means that the animal is using the sugarcane field or habitation. Mm -hmm. So now the situation like this is again calls for uh, increased attention to the communities to make them aware. Because even you saw the video, maybe the tiger was tired or whatever it was there, but it was not in the mood to be very aggressive or something like that. Right. Okay. Right. But uh, I can tell you, if tiger wants it, one whack is enough. So it, it is such yeah. a powerful animal, but then it right. is a decision that animal generally makes mm -hmm. not to be mm -hmm. aggressive. So like you asked this question, to me, it's trying to create more awareness among the people about the behavior of the tiger mm -hmm. and about the behavior of the people. So right. I've seen it in a number of cases, a number of cases where human wildlife conflict has been talked about, be it leopard, tiger. Mm -hmm. Invariably, we've done it studies in multiple locations. Invariably, Animals tend to avoid human. They try to adjust their time. They try to avoid. But okay. it is a human, it is the human who don't want to change. So they don't want to really, they gently feel that no, either they're overconfident that nothing will happen to them, or they yeah. think it's, it is not. Uh, it's the second uh, thing is that why should I change myself? And it's I'm more powerful. So I think it's the community engagement part to me, it's more of a creating that like, kind of awareness because with familiarity people will behave better even right. conflict situation animals are in conflict when they find itself in more unfamiliar situation if it knows the place landscape they will avoid but when you corner them then that's when the situation becomes more challenging and difficult so i i would say that you know while a lot of effort has now has been happening i think the government is very clear on it and we have been working as a wildlife institute uh, while we are putting a lot of effort on protection strategies. Community engagement has been seen as a clear uh, requirement to ensure long-term survival of tiger happen. Because right. uh, I also stated on the social media, what you saw in Pilibit uh, is the situation that might happen uh, more often, but not as a, some kind of danger. Is something that a human need to expect the tiger population increasing. They will be dispersing not dispersing into human habitation. It is trying to find a better place. In, mm -hmm. Because destroyed the forest in many places, they will have to negotiate human areas to reach other forest area. Mm -hmm. So so it is our own damage. It's coming back to us. 
So um, looking ahead, you know, what are the key priorities for your team right now? I mean, also, uh, what was really interesting is that the technology, you know, now that you have access to, uh, it has really played a greater role, you know, um, to in this whole conservation process. So what's your key priority right now, you know, going looking forward? See, for example, we are a wildlife institute, a technical institution. We play a support role majorly. Okay. So right. the priorities it's already been set out with an action plan which the government of which West of Bengal has already worked out. So the list of actions has been specified. So we are now after this habitat and we are currently, I think you should also have a conversation with them. So mm -hmm. what their priorities are because our priority will more or less align to their priority. But just since you asked, then I let me explain. So currently our priority will be to focus on making sure the, the animal that comes there, mm -hmm. whether we can make them stay, what are those elements that are required? Okay. So that yeah. means that the closer, closer understanding of this animal will be key. So putting a technology like camera trap has been used very extensively, we'll be doing. Yeah. So I would also be I would also be trying to encourage uh, the department to see if you can also put a radio transmitter on these animals which are coming to understand what's mm -hmm. happening. So maybe they're staying, why they're not staying. So simultaneously, while we prepare for the corridor and also maybe active translocation, monitoring these animals also becomes uh, one of the priority. Second priority is, is to talk to those uh, people on the borders, in the borders in Bhutan, borders in Assam, and then see, uh, because there are natural connectivities to Baksa. Mm -hmm. So we want to understand where is the bottleneck. Mm -hmm. Maybe once the bottleneck is clear, might be a challenge, but one has to work towards it. Uh, mm -hmm. Possible that the tigers might come naturally coming to Baksa. But at the same time, the other priority is also to see if there are areas that could be made inviolate. There are villages inside. So government, we are also working together to see if that can be relocated. So it helps, I mean, it helps people as well as uh, the park. So this is a long-term process. People have to continue to engage. Uh, okay. And then again, um, uh, increase the monitoring, uh, you know, into a level that you know we know what's exactly going on I, so far we've done fairly well uh, in terms of understanding bugs uh, what is explained in fact this tiger that is coming uh, i've been telling to my team and also forest department it's going to happen because natural connected because with the protection increase protection more prey base tiger will come mm -hmm. uh, i think government is also simultaneously thinking that you know maybe trying to augment with more tiger from elsewhere mm -hmm. uh, so i can tell you since i'm interacting with the media after a very long time I want to take this opportunity to tell you that North Bengal uh, will develop into one of the very important uh, tiger conservation area because it, it has natural uh, support system in terms of habitat, the terrain. Even the people are, uh, I think uh, it's called Bengal tiger. I think the people in Bengal must put the priority to tiger, even though when we talk about the tiger classification. So I think Indian, the tiger which live in India, we call it a Bengal tiger. So that itself is enough reason for people in West Bengal, you know, to attach highest priority yeah. to tiger conservation. Yeah. To take the baton in their hand. Yeah. So thank yes. you so much, sir, for joining us in this conversation and for illuminating us, uh, uh, you know, the kind of effort that's going into uh, tiger conservation. And uh, thank you so much and wish you all the best uh, in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.